In our previous video, we have checked out on how to build a logistic regression model that does binary classification. Binary classification predicts one of the two possible outcomes. So it can be either a yes or no, or it can be a decision regarding will a person buy a product or he will not buy a product. In our previous video, based on the age of the person, we had predicted whether the person is employed or not. This video is going to be about building a logistic regression model which does multi-class classification. So here the model can predict three or more possible outcomes. So for example, based on the input attributes, the model can predict whether uh, the uh, vehicle is a car or it can it is a motorbike or it is a truck. Or in the case of another example, based on the given input attributes, the model can predict whether the phone is a iPhone or it is a Google Pixel or it's a Samsung or it's from Motorola. So these are examples of multi-class logistic regression. In this video of multi-class logistic regression, we are going to use this IRIS dataset. This dataset has different attributes like sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Using all these attributes, these are independent variables or independent attributes. Using all these independent attributes, we are going to predict the species which is the dependent attribute. And the species has three possible values. One is iris setosa, one is iris versicolor and uh, the next one is iris virginica. If you wanted to get a feel of what this data set is about, iris is nothing but a flower and it has different species this flower has different species and what we have in our data set is the petal so this part is the petal and we do have lengths of the petal and the width of the petal and this part of the flower it is sepal and we do have the length and width of sepal so using these attributes we are going to predict what species of iris flower is this i have downloaded this data in from kaggle.com uh, i can just show you how i did it so i just used download iris data csv and when i searched for it i was able to find it in kaggle i'll mention the link of this uh, data set in the description of this video so that you can refer it and uh, here is this data set I just uh, use this data set and then I just downloaded it and we are going to use it for our demo. I have downloaded this iris data set in the same location as my code and uh, I am going to use Jupyter Notebook for this demo. In the first two lines I am importing pandas and from sklearn.model selection I am importing train test split. I will run this block of code. Next. I am going to read the iris file that we have just downloaded and I am going to store it in a data frame by name data. Once I store it, then I am going to print the data frame. When I run this piece of code, you can see that the data is printed and here you can see that the sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width are displayed and we can also see the species name displayed. So totally there are 150 rows and 5 columns. Machine learning models handles only numeric data and here we have numeric data for all the columns except for species. I wanted to change the value of each species into a number. In order to do that I just wanted to know what are all the species are available because here in this display I am not able to see the entire uh, value of all the species. So in order to get that I am just using data of pieces dot unique. So when I run this line I can see that there are three unique values for species. So what I am planning to do is for iris setosa I am going to modify this as one and iris versicolor I am going to replace it with two and iris virginica I am going to replace it with three. In order to do that, I am going to use replace command. So here I am going to use data species dot replace. 
and within the replace i am going to give the inputs as dic dictionary so in the first value which is iris setasa i am going to replace it with 1 and then the second value iris versicolor i am going to replace it with 2 and the third value iris virginica i am going to replace it with 3 now i have done this i am going to assign this output back to data species so that i can just uh, have the change stored back when i run this piece of code and then when i display the data again you can see that the values from species has been replaced by 1 to 1 3 before i can create the multi class logistic regression model i wanted to split this data into a trading and testing data set so in order to do that i am going to use the strain test split that we have imported earlier so here i am using the strain test split and then i am going to just give all these independent attributes like sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width these are the independent attributes i am going to give this as x parameter and then as the y parameter i am going to give this pieces so let me quickly do that so in the test train split i have given the x parameter with a list of all the independent attributes and now i am going to give the y parameter of the test train split which is going to be species and this is the dependent attribute so i have given both now this data has a set of independent attributes like sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width and it has one dependent attribute which is species when i run this line of code for train test split what happens is this entire data with 150 rows is split into two blocks one block is for training and one block is for testing and within each block there will be both independent attributes and dependent attributes the independent attributes we are going to name it with capital x and the dependent attribute we are going to name it with small y and i need to specify here on how much data i need to have for testing so i am going to specify it with test size and i am going to have 20 percent of the entire data set for testing which means that out of 150 rows 30 rows will go for testing and the remaining 120 rows will be used for training and i am going to store the output of this split into x train x test y train and y test so when i run this piece of code all these variables x train x test y train and y test would have been populated so here i have done one mistake i wanted to specify as test underscore size instead of train size because for training i will have to use 80 percent of the data and for testing i'll have to use the remaining 20 percent of the data so i'll run this piece of code again for your reference or i'm going to display the training data set so when i display the training data set you can see that there are 120 rows and uh, there are four columns with all the independent variables and then when i display the white train you can see that there are same 120 rows with the corresponding dependent variables for the x train so this will be used for training and the x test and the y test will be used for testing and these two data sets will be having 30 rows next we are going to build the logistic regression model and we are going to use the x train and y train to train the model so i am using this block of code here i am importing linear model from sklearn and then i am creating an instance of logistic regression class and i am naming that instance as my model and then I am referring the method fit of logistic regression class and I am giving the x train and y train as inputs to train the model and I am executing or running this block of code you can see that the model has completed and sometimes you may get an error 
saying that the model has not converged and it will uh, the error message will ask you to increase the maximum number of iterations so here in order to just demonstrate that error i am going to have only 10% to test my data and the remaining 90% i am going to use as my training data so i will run this block of code again and then x train is going to have 135 rows instead of 120 rows and y train is going to have the same 135 corresponding uh, attributes for uh, the dependent uh, attributes and now when i run this model again you can see that there is a error throwing up so the error says that it is a convergence warning and the model has failed to converge the total number of iterations has reached the limit in order to understand the convergence convergence error we need to understand what is convergence in machine learning so what happens in machine learning is the model makes the predictions based on the input data that we are giving in our case we have given 135 rows of test data and once the predictions is done the the model will check the predicted outcome with the actual outcome and then calculate the error after the error is calculated the model will try to minimize the error after each predictions and and this iteration is repeated until the error keeps minimizing once the error has reached its minimum value then it means that the model has converged after the model has converged there will not be any possibilities of the model to further reduce its error in our case the model was trying to converge after each iterations but it was not able to converge because the preset value on the number of iterations has reached this limit in order to resolve this error we need to increase the maximum number of iterations coming back to the code the maximum number of iterations by default is 100 and the 100 iteration was not enough for our model to converge to a minimum error so i am going to increase the maximum number of iterations in order to do that in the logistic regression class i am going to give this max underscore iter value to 120 and i am going to run this block of code again when i run this again you can see that the machine learning model has run without any errors now i can use this model to make predictions in order to do that i am going to use my model dot predict and here i am going to give the x test as input when i run this block of code you can see that the predictions has been done and there are around like uh, 15 values or 15 outputs and these outputs are the predictions made by the model for the test data set so just to have a feel of how the test data set looks like i am going to print the test data set and you can see that these this is the test data set and it has totally 15 rows and each of these rows will be having independent attributes and for these independent attributes or for the set of independent attributes the model has predicted the outcome so for example for this first set the model has predicted the outcome of 3 which means that uh, the species is actually iris virginica and for the second set uh, of attributes independent attributes the model has predicted the outcome of 1 which means that the species is iris setosa likewise the model has predicted the outcome for all the independent attributes the model has made predictions but we don't know how accurate it is in order to know the accuracy of the model i can use my model dot score and then i can give the test data set x underscore test and y underscore test and get the score and the score of my model is 1.0 which means my model is 100% accurate. 
I'm just going to decrease my training data set and, and, and increase the testing data set. So I'm going to give 30% of my data for testing and the remaining for training. And I'm going to rerun this block of code. So the accuracy of our model now is 93.33 percentage. And uh, this is the outcome that is predicted by our model for the input which is displayed over here. So we wanted to know more about where this model has went wrong. And in order to know that there is something called confusion matrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just store the predicted output into a variable called predicted output. And when I display the predicted output, you can see that it is an array and it is having all the outputs that has been predicted by the model. Next, I am going to use this block of code where I have imported confusion matrix from sklearn.matrix and then I am just creating cm which is the instant of confusion matrix class and I am going to and have passed y underscore test and predicted output. y underscore test is the actual output and here we have the predicted output and for both the actual output versus the predicted output I am creating the confusion matrix and I am displaying the matrix. So when I display the value of CM you can see that a 3 by 3 array is created and uh, all we know at this point of time is that there are three possible outcomes that our model can predict and hence we have got a 3 by 3 array. But you may just be thinking what does this actually signifies. In order to explain that better, I am going to use a Seaborn plot. In order to explain this confusion matrix array better, I am going to use this block of code where I am importing Seaborn as SN and I am importing pyplot from matplotlib and I am using the plot size or figure size as 5 by 4 which means the x-axis the size is 5 and y-axis the length is 4 and then I am using seaborn.heatmap and I am going and I am giving the confusion matrix as input and I am labeling the x-axis as predicted value and y-axis as truth or actual value and when I run this block of code you can see that this plot is generated and here in the x-axis we have the predicted value by the model and in the y-axis we have the actual value or the truth. So what this plot means is the model has predicted 0 uh, where the actual value as well was 0 and this has happened 15 times. So 15 predictions were correct. The next one the model has predicted 1 where the actual value was also 1 and this correct prediction was done 13 times but the model has predicted 1 where the actual value was 2 and this wrong prediction has happened 2 times. In the same way the model has predicted 2 while the actual value was 2 and this correct prediction has happened 14 times but one time the model has predicted the value of 2 where the actual value was 1 and this is wrong. So you can see that out of the total 45 predictions, 3 has went wrong and this is how the wrong predictions was made and this is the use of confusion matrix. So this is all I have for this video. You can refer the description of this video and I have included the link for this code and, and in the description of the video, I have included the links of my all the other videos. Please have a look and I hope you like this video. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe it. Thank you very much.